Gold FM is number one here in Sigatoka. Gold FM is our favorite radio station here in Lotoka. Gold FM is number one in Nelly. I love listening to Gold FM in Ba. We love listening to Gold FM only the classic hits here in Suva. Here about Batu Kola, you immediately think of gold. I'm Josephine Sabi and I love hearing Gold FM. Gold FM, only the classic hits. former Archbishop of the Catholic Church, Petro Matava, has passed away. Pramod Rai confirms NFP ticket. And Fiji First makes financial disclosures. Good evening, I'm Jackie Spate and this is FBC News. Archbishop Emeritus Petro Matava has passed away at the age of 81 after a long illness. The late Archbishop of Fiji and Rotuma died at the Suva Private Hospital yesterday morning. He led the church for 40 years before retiring to hand over the reins to Archbishop Peter Loy Chong two years ago. These are pictures from 1976 when the late Archbishop was ordained as the head of the Catholic Church in Fiji and Rotuma. The Methodist community in Fiji has sent its condolences, saying Matava was a humble servant of God and led his community of faith with wisdom. Pacific Conference of Churches General Secretary Reverend Francois Fitai says the late Archbishop Matava contributed immensely to the development of Fiji and the re religion. Pramod Rai today stepped down as General Secretary of the Fiji Bank and Financial Sector Employees Union. Chanel Sivan reports Rai will now contest the elections under the National Federation Party banner. Rai has been the General Secretary of the Bank and Financial Sector Employees Union since March 2004. He says leaving the union movement wasn't an easy decision. We have been forced into this position of uh, taking the plunge into the, in, in the political field uh, and uh, not by choice but as I said by, by compulsion uh, and the cause that we are fighting for that I'm joining with the National Federation Party is worth any amount of sacrifice that anybody can make. Under the political party's decree, a unionist can't contest the elections. FBC News also asked Rai if he is giving up an attractive package to enter into politics. Um, <laughs> well, that's, that's a very personal question. I was under a contract of employment with the Fiji Bank and Finance Sector Employees Union. Uh, it's up to the Executive Council of the Union to reveal what my... Uh, uh, pay and conditions were if they wish to, but you see this is a two-way thing and I'm not, not at liberty to disclose that. But uh, let's say it, it's, it's quite substantial, quite significant. He has decided to sacrifice his job, uh, sh uh, should I say a very lucrative job, um, uh, to join the National Federation Party and fight this election. And uh, we welcome him uh, wholeheartedly. Amendments to the political party's decree 2013 requires political leaders and office bearers who took up office after registration to declare their assets and liabilities and that of their wives and children within 30 days from June 30th. This also includes Rai and NFP leader Biman Prasad. When the party registered, the NFP uh, declared uh, the party's assets. All the people who registered the party declared and, uh, their assets and did so on time. Uh, we were going to declare our assets anyway. You know, this is going to um, force us to declare the assets now, uh, and if it is a legal requirement, we will do so. The NFP will reveal the remainder of its candidates this weekend. Chanel Shivan, FBC News. The Fiji First Party has submitted declarations of assets and liabilities of its party leaders and office bearers to the Fijian Elections Office as required under Section 16 and 24 of the Elections Decree. Party General Secretary Aya Said Kayum said the declarations were submitted before the deadline yesterday. Supervisor of Elections Mohamed Sinim says the declarations will go to the Register of Political Parties before it is published in the newspaper. The Fiji Broadcasting Corporation celebrated 60 years of broadcasting today, having taken to the airwaves in 1954 with public service broadcasts in three major languages, English, Itauke and Hindustani. Now, six decades later, the company is an industry leader with six radio stations and a television station. Vosita Kotewasawasa reports. 
broadcasting house was the breeding ground for many people who became celebrities of their day. Some of those who were in the industry back then, including those working here today, took time to reminisce on the good old days and noted the major changes that FBC has gone through over the years. We had to do our editing, we had to do our own program formatting, we do our own recording, then we had to do our own editing. There was no digital editing at the time, we cut, so we cut and pasted with tape. Technology has changed a lot, so many things uh, have taken place and uh, I really enjoy working over here. The biggest uh, change I have seen is uh, uh, through its um, technology. An announcer would be sitting in a room um, doing his business and uh, if he wanted a, a song to be played, he would signal the um, uh, technicians in another room uh, to play the, the song, where today, whereas today um, uh, an announcer can run the one station uh, by him or herself. Uh, changes that uh, we have now, it makes us uh, uh, do a lot of work, like we feed everything into the computer and they throw it out. Not like before, when you use uh, tape and cartridge, you can go out. At least somebody's supposed to be in the studio all the time. Now everything is just, uh, you know, you, you press a button and everything appears, but uh, then, no. Uh, it was semi. You were you're using a computer, at the same time you're using the old system, cartridge and reels. FBC Chief Executive Riaz Sayyab Kayyum says the journey has been one of transformation through the years. I, I really don't know whether uh, the pioneers who, who started off FBC had actually thought that uh, we would one day, you know, have this sort of reach have this sort of popularity, have a TV station, etc., etc. So, you know, I, I think uh, in hindsight, it's, it's, a, it's an amazing achievement for, for any institution. Sayyad Kayyum says the success of FBC would not have come about without the dedication of those who served in the company through the years until now, and especially with its listeners and viewers. Vasita Koti Wasawasa, FBC News. Still to come on FBC News, Income Tax Act Amendment almost complete. Gold FM is number one here in Singatoka. Gold FM is our favorite radio station here in Lotoka. Gold FM is number one in Nen. I love listening to Gold FM in Ba. We love listening to Gold FM. Only the classic hits here in Suva. Here about Bat of Cola, you immediately think of gold. I'm Josephine Sabi and I love hearing Gold FM. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Welcome back, this is FBC News. The Commerce Commission today confirmed airfares for domestic flights are significantly higher than what they would be in a competitive market. The findings are part of a preliminary investigation into the domestic air transport sector. Christopher Chand reports, while the Commission is concerned, it won't intervene in the work of the Airport Transport Licensing Board. The results of a Commerce Commission study in 2011 are not surprising. Our research demonstrates, uh, the preliminary investigation demonstrates that uh, the, the, the fare that, that used to exist, which is you know, uh, close to $200 one way, uh, it's uh, substantially higher than what would exist in a competitive market. Dr. Mahendra Reddy says they've come up with a methodology that can determine what the prices should be. However, nothing much can come of it because they don't want to undermine the work of the Air Transport Licensing Board, which is the regulator. Wherever there exists a specific regulatory body for a particular sector, then we don't need to intervene. Uh, we have an overarching responsibility of fair trading practices. Uh, that is uh, the route through which we come. But in this case, uh, there is a specific regulatory body. The Commission says regulating domestic airfares is not the answer. There must be a long-term solution. What people should understand is let's not look for a Panadol solution. Let's 
you know, look for a more sustainable solution. I think we need to need to work with the existing new player that has entered the market, that's Northern Airlines, and as well as uh, see where we can, whether we can attract more players into the market. Air Transport Licensing Board Chairman Ernest Datta explains there is an airfare structure which the airlines need to follow. Datta says airlines are charging a premium price because of the lack of competition. Christopher Chand, FBC News. Fiji Airways has announced a three-month 30% discount for domestic and regional flights for Fiji citizens only. Alipate Nayorosui has resigned as Chief Executive Officer of the Housing Authority of Fiji. The Housing Authority says Nayorosui has served for 22 years with 11 as CEO. Board Director Umarji Musa said Nayorosui's effort in trying to ensure affordable housing was paid off when the right to accessible and adequate housing and sanitation became entrenched in the 2013 Constitution. Nayorosui's contract had expired and it's understood he chose not to renew it. FBC News was told he wants to spend time on his farm. The Department of Social Welfare is calling for more support to help orphan children find good homes. There are nine institutions in Fiji caring for children without parents or those who have been taken into the care of the state due to the situation in their homes. Ellen Stahls reports community support is vital for the proper upbringing of these children. The Residential Caregiving Quarterly Meeting in Suva today is looking into the challenges faced by the nine children's homes in Fiji. Director of Social Welfare Rupeni Fatiaki says they are encouraging these institutions to have plans for the academic development of their wards. Looking at uh, you know, the children that are coming into the homes, they're not just coming into the homes, but you know, while they're in the homes, we, they, are, they need to develop care plans. So these care plans is to ensure that while they're in the home, like it also includes education. What will the homes and us as a ministry will do uh, in trying to you know ensure that they continue the education, or if like if they have come to us and they are not educate, I mean they are not going to school. So what can we do? So those are the kind of things that our our people work with in homes. All nine homes are being audited to see whether they're in line with the government's regulations on safety and protection of children. One of the issues was the audit of the homes. There is a minimum standard that has been endorsed by government, and this is the minimum standard for all the homes that they need to comply with. So it's like issues like the safety of the children, you know, um, having uh, fire drills. Uh. Homes of Hope coordinator Nanise Rasuyaki says these meetings help her to better run her home. The great thing about the residential forum that we're attending today is uh, hearing from the different managers and hearing what the government is offering to assist us with. So it's something that's, uh, that's great for us every quarter, yes. Children's homes aren't entirely run by aid. The government also has its allocations. So there is two grants that are given to one is for the day-to-day -day well-being of the children, which is $100 per month for each child. And the grants is depending on, on, on their request, and it's 20000 10000 depending on the request. There are currently 125 children housed in nine different homes across the country, in Savusavu, Nandi, Mba, and right here in Suva. Ellen Stolls, FBC News. People of Lamy now have easy access to the internet with the opening of a telecenter at the Lamy High School. Josephine Navula reports. These people now join 77,000 Fijians around the country who for the first time have access to the World Wide Web. 24 others currently up and running, 24 others telecenters currently up and running. It is for the use of students during school hours and the rest of the community in the evening and on weekends. Prime Minister Wurenge Banyamarama says while their primary goal has been to install these facilities in rural and maritime areas, he's made sure that larger towns and cities are not overlooked. I told that 65% of Lamy High School's 352 students don't have access to a personal computer and internet connection at home. That's more than 225 students. And this doesn't even take into account the 5,000 members of the local community. Lamy High School Vice Principal Hulita Lingambalavu says the telecenter is a huge boost for students. 
It's something that we are grateful for uh, because the uh, students, they benefit so much from this telecenter. Benefit in the sense that uh, they used to hunt around for, for computers to type the assignments, researches, internet cafes, but now it is being brought into the school. Form 7 student Apisalom Yamborua says these facilities are a vital learning tool. I think it is a great opportunity for us since uh, we are now doing a project and all and yeah, it has been uh, very, <laughs> we appreciate it. The new telecenter will open from today at 4 p.m. and closes at 9 p.m. It will also open to the public seven days a week. Josephine Nobula, FBC News. The new income tax decree has been finalized. Fiji Revenue and Customs Authority Chief Executive Chitoko Tikoilevu says they've been working on the decree for more than two years now. He says the decree will soon be endorsed by Cabinet. We also uh, brought in a new uh, regime which relates to fringe benefit tax. Um, so all, all these projects has been, as you know, the fringe benefit tax is also being launched and uh, it's also been implemented uh, two years ago. And uh, all these key projects as part of our reform has all been completed. The review of the Income Tax Act, which was introduced in 1974, is to save costs for local businesses and make Fiji Revenue and Customs Authority more efficient. And we turn to sports now with Jamie. Good evening. Coming up, Fiji Hockey names under-18 women's team to the Youth Olympic Games and the latest from the FIFA World Cup. This and more after the break. I love Richie FM, it's so hot. They came a la la, me high high. Thank you, thank you, so me. Richie FM is hot. Here at Rugby Town, Singer Talker, love listening to Richie FM. Richie FM, it's hot. Richie FM is number one in Suva. It's hot. Richie FM, bow chalo chalo. Richie FM, it's hot. Welcome back to FBC Sports. The Fiji Under-18 Women's Hockey Squad was named yesterday for the Youth Olympic Games in China. The Fiji Hockey Federation is now focused on keeping the players in peak condition and avoiding injuries prior to their departure in August. Tale Ndavakavaka has more. There were no major surprises in the announcement of the national hockey side to the Youth Olympic Games. Lala Rabatu retained the captaincy after leading the side during the qualifying tournament in Vanuatu in March. Reserve players have also been shortlisted to cover for any injuries that may occur before the team departs for China. It's, it's a long way off to the games and uh, as we all know, hockey uh, can um, get injuries uh, just overnight or girls will pull hamstrings or whatever. So uh, we've got that all organized now. A ray of hope still remains for those that missed out on selection. We give them Tuesday and Wednesday to appeal. If there's an appeal, then the appeals tribunal, Fast Knock Appeals Tribunal, will meet on Thursday. And uh, they give their decision straight away. And then their decision will be forwarded to the executive board on Friday for final approval. The junior women's side will fly the Fiji flag at the Youth Olympics alongside Sevens Rugby, Athletics, Weightlifting and Swimming. Talendo Dakavak, FBC Sports. The Fiji National Rugby League is impressed by the support received for its outreach program this year. Apart from organizing the first Vanualevu zone, the league attracted a large turnout to the top eight games in Tavua last week. The move left a huge impression on the people of Tavua who are now seeking to establish their own zone competition in the Vodafone Cup. We've been getting uh, positive outcomes as a result of taking it down to Tabua. Tabua wants to have a, a new zone next year. Uh, talking to, uh, to Tabua, he said that there's seven villages in that in Tabua, Tabua level. The seven villages which can make up seven teams that can create a zone. But that has to be uh, taken up to the board and we'll decide if Tavua is going to have a zone on their own next year. In tomorrow's elimination games, Argentina will meet Switzerland at 4 a.m., while Belgium takes on United States at 8. You can watch both games live on FBC TV. That's it from Sports Tonight. Good evening.
The Fiji National Provident Fund has today announced the purchase of Vodafone's entire 49% stake in Vodafone Fiji Limited. FMPF's direct and indirect ownership of Vodafone is now 79%. Under the new arrangement, the current VFL board directors will continue to serve. FMPF CEO Aisake Taito said the investment is part of FMPF's move to diversify its investment portfolio. Fine weather all day long, and on that note, it's weather time with Trish. That's absolutely right, Jackie. Good weather galore today. Silva, Nandi, Lotokamba, Savu Savu, and Lambasa, all six major centers had fine weather all day. Let's look at today's temperatures with Suva on uh, 29. Uh, 28 actually, 90, 29, bar 31, where Savu Savu was on 28 and Lombasa hit 32. Tomorrow's forecast for Suva and Savu Savu, as usual, similar conditions as they just might have a chance of occasional shower during the day. As for the rest of the centers, major centers that is, Nadi Lotokamba and Lombasa should have fine weather all day. For Mariners, a strong wind warning remains in force for Kandavu and Batuira passages, northern Lao and northern Vanuanlevu waters. Weather well, image of the day is of the old school FBC. And today, the 1st of July, FBC turns 60. Thanks so much for that, Trish. Recapping the top stories, former Archbishop of the Catholic Church, Petro Matava, has passed away. Pramod Rai resigns from Banking Sector Union to join National Federation Party and Fiji First makes financial disclosures of its assets and liabilities. Now on to the results from last week's poll question we asked. Sorry. On to, we're, the question we're asking this week is should there be more policing of nightclubs? Visit our FBC website to take part. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email, citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj, or share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC News or simply hashtag FBC News. That's all from the news team. I'll be back again tomorrow evening. Till then, good evening. Goal FM is number one here in Sigatoka. Gold FM is our favorite radio station here in Lotoka. Gold FM is number one in Nen. I love listening to Gold FM in Ba. We love listening to Gold FM. Only the classic is here in Suva. Here about Batu Kola, you immediately think of gold. I'm Josephine Sadi and I love hearing Gold FM. Gold FM. Only the classic hits.